Boom. Welcome to the Enlightrepreneurs. We are here with Judah Hernandez, just a wonderful human, beautiful man and friend of mine. Judah is the, let's see, director of On The Dot Studios, the founder of Black and White Media. You're going to get to hear more about what those two are. A producer, a musician as well, a writer, director, I mean, you name it. Now fixing up motorbikes, I see. Yeah, is that okay? If you follow him on Facebook, you're going to see that he's just picking up a hobby in his spare time of just learning how to fix motorbikes from scratch. Anyway, so <laughs> proud of who you are. So glad to have you here. So Judah, talk a bit about your story. How did you even end up doing what you're doing? All right. Long story short, because one day this will be a book. One day this is going to be a book. So uh, I actually- I'm Holding I you to that. In, yes. I uh, actually grew up in the U.S., and um, actually moved from Trinidad to the U.S. But uh, in the U.S., there's something really cool in high schools. And I don't know, you know, if it's every single high school, but there's magnet programs. I happened to go to high school that had a film program as a magnet program. Mm. Um, and I just fell into it. A friend of mine was like, hey, come do this project with me. And, uh, and let's, let's see how it goes. And I fell in love, absolutely fell in love with the filmmaking process, with everything. They, this school had their own television station that's as part of the program. So I ended up becoming like an anchor on this channel and it was fantastic. Even though that was a really fun, passionate time, uh, my first passion was and sort of is still soccer. So I went to play professional when I was 18 years old in, in Europe. I played for the Trinidad national team. Um, and I had an okay run for a time, but injuries and, and different life circumstances made me have to kind of change course. And of course, uh, and I want to put this in context for people yeah. too. Um, so Judah had long dreadlocks. I want you to picture this, <laughs> right? This is your soccer days, right? You had these long oh, flowing yeah. dreadlocks at this time. Um, yeah. Okay. Continue. Continue. <laughs> um, so my, my wife who I met for my brief stint in university one semester in Miami, she's from Canada where I, where I live now in Toronto and uh, we actually went to Europe together she played professional soccer as well it was this heavenly heaven-sent relationship mm. um, and she's been by my side through the ups and the downs and the very very lows um, but when I realized that injuries and different circumstance wouldn't allow me to continue on this dream of playing soccer I had to think of what's next um well without formal education and things like that i was i started to a moment of reckoning a moment of realization that this dream that i put all my eggs into this basket wasn't coming to fruition um, so i just sat back and asked god like where where do i go and then all these signs i want to call them signs but all these doors start opening in this direction that i had this passion for I've, I've always been a storyteller i've always been uh keen to use imagery and visuals even from a kid i did art and things like that and someone put a camera in my hands and it was over like that's wow. you know it was almost an immediate kind of connection with what you could do with a camera and the ability that technology gave me, us, to tell stories to the world is just phenomenal. We live in a time that unprecedented the way that you can connect with people. Mm. So. Mm. so we have um, Dave Gold here, my <laughs> partner at, uh, at the Entrepreneurs, who I realized we announced in the pregame, but not in the game game. Um, so, Dave, what are you making of this story? What are you extracting from the way that Judah has landed on his passion? Because I know you're, you're a seer. You see, see trends and see patterns in this type of stuff. So what are you extracting from that? I think, first of all, that I want to be the agent for their daughter's soccer career. And I want to know if I can sign up right away. <laughs> I'll, take a small, I'll, I'll take a small percentage of the cut, but I see the bloodlines here. And, right, uh, right. 
I definitely, I definitely got to dip my beak, as we say in the legal game. <laughs> <laughs> I just see, I just see just a beautiful man that's led by his faith and 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 uh, by his heart. Hmm. And I think the part of what I see that you, exu- you know, your story is. I know there's a lot more to your story, but I just see that you just exude. You know, I just go back a step. When Justin said, you got to meet Judy, he's a beautiful person. Well, Judith, well, Justin's like a golden, like my golden retriever. You know, he loves everybody. So <laughs> I do I, love everybody. I'm kind of, <laughs> I can see that a little bit of hyper. And then when you came in, I, when we were done, I said, son of a gun, Justin, you were being hyperbolic. He really is. No, a I didn't oversell him. <laughs> yeah, you guys are giving high praise. I appreciate it. Yeah, we're, uh, we're done stroking. But anyway, just to answer this question, I just see someone who's really beautiful, led by faith and doing exactly what they want, you know, my first teacher, someone said, are you happy? And he said, I guess so. I know exactly what I want to do. I'm spending hundred percent of my time doing it. Mm-hmm. I think as much as your story in terms of how to help people with their, you know, their visual presence and all that is just, you know, whatever you can add in terms of how people can end up like you doing hundred percent of the time doing what they love to do most. Right. Absolutely. Which, it has not been an easy ride, and I've got, gotten to see some of that. So Judah and I met up in Toronto. We were going to the same spot, uh, West Edge Church. Shout out to Matthew. If you happen to be watching Mary Beth, the crew over there, I love you guys so much. Man. Oh, man, <laughs> W-E. Um, so we met over there, and it, not only were we two of the only black people there, so we had to connect on that, um, but we actually connected beyond that and just uh, our love for humanity, our love for making a difference. And so I've gotten to see part. Would you talk about some of the ups and downs, right? Because you're sitting here doing it in a flashy blazer, right? A hundred percent of the time doing the work that you love doing, but that's not an easy road. I mean, it's not even easy right now, I'm sure, as an entrepreneur. So give us some behind the scenes on what it actually looks like to live your passion and not just settle for a nine to five or whatever it is, you know, not that there's anything wrong with that, but if you want to pursue this, what does that actually look like? It's funny. I'm actually last year, we made a short film, sort of the origin story of black and white media Mm. and just touching on some of the very critical points that got me to where I am. For example, um, the, the first year that I, said i'm doing this i quit my job i'm doing this full time Uh, i invested at the time for me 10 grand in equipment which is a lot of money huge yeah um so for my wife's birthday i was taking her to montreal but it was kind of a side hustle thing i was going to shoot some video out there so i packed up all my gear we were going to montreal she was pregnant at the time i believe and uh we uh we got there the first day got out of the car went to the shop in a very busy street came back and car was broken into and all my stuff was stolen yeah that's like everything um i can just feel our collective audience's toes curling right now literally oh. (laughs) oh that's not even the cringy part the cringy part was that um i had not yet gotten insurance on my stuff that's how that's how much it was. so i had nothing covered <sighs> yeah it's still it's some one of those things that i still uh cringe about but it set it set the tone for so many other things so i'm it's not a feeling of regret it just it's still it's anyway yeah it's one of those things but that well, that was one of the like, lowest well, it's like a wound that you have that you're still grateful for. Absolutely, exactly. That's a perfect way to put it. Um, but I can never, I'll never forget driving home. Like if you feel, have you ever felt such shame? Even though I, I didn't do anything really wrong, I just felt shame that I put all my life on the line and then right. driving back in If you're February, pregnant, you know, you got a baby on the way and what are you thinking? I it's it's February in Montreal, guys, and the window's broken. We had to I had to tape gar- a garbage bag on the window, and it's like flapping in the wind. And we're freezing in the car, and oh we're driving God. back. We're driving back through the night because we're not we can't stay there with an with an open car. Wow! It was one of the most shameful experiences. 
but that was a huge catalyst uh, in, in what I am doing now. So anyway. So how did, where's the happy ending? Give us a happy ending so we can uncurl our toes here. <laughs> happy ending, man. It, there's, it was a long while after that for like a huge happy ending. But, um, you know, since then, there's been a lot of small wins that yeah. are coming up to the top. Actually, here's a huge win. This year, I was voted by this company called Beverly Boy as one of the top 100 corporate video production companies in the world. Wow. So um, that's based not just on the content that you produce. Mm -hmm. but it's also based on service records, you know, reviews. They take a holistic view of your company, yeah. which I was truly honored by. So that's huge, man. Now, yeah. what was the journey? Because right now, give us a snapshot of what you're working on now. I know you are really focused on partnering with companies long term rather than just producing these one off videos. And Talk a little bit about the evolution of how you ended up really as a, a strategic partner more than just a quote video guy, right? Because yes. I think that's a big, that's a big evolution. Talk about that a bit. So as I started, obviously you kind of learn and adapt, but one thing I, I started seeing from early was that a lot of companies saw video as this trend. It's like, oh, we've got to do a video. Uh, a lot of people saw it as this like magic silver bullet bullet. You put something online and then you automatically go viral. Right. And I thought that's, that's really work. You'd be super lucky if that happened. Um, and what I started to notice was no matter how good my content was, um, it wouldn't get the client that return that they were looking for. Cause it is an investment any sort of marketing is and video happens to be probably the most heavily invested type of marketing mm -hmm. because of all the pieces that are, that are involved. However, you do see the biggest returns on that investment. Now, yeah. why I'm starting to partner with companies rather than just doing one-off videos is because we don't want to just give them this nice video here. Good luck go do your thing and hope for the best. What I'm trying to do is help them come up with a strategy. What's the message? What's the goal? And in that, in that video, all those pieces kind of reflect what the brand is and what the overall strategy is. Because if it's just a standalone video that isn't talking about the brand identity, isn't hitting any of the goals or the targets, it is a wasted investment at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're just kind of shooting a shotgun out and hoping something lands, right? Yeah, I think that's so key. So yeah, I, use the, I use the analogy with all my clients when we're starting out is we don't want to throw this proverbial spaghetti at the wall and hope that something sticks. Hmm. We want to have a, a much more accurate, laser-guided type of uh, campaign. Right, tied to actual strategy, brilliant. Absolutely. Yeah, and so part of it, so you, as we talked yesterday, I think that you're basically more of a partner than like a, than a, than a, than a service, right? Yes, yes. And it seems like that plays really well into your superpowers because uh, just you, you have a, you can feel very deeply, you get the subtleties of like the culture and what they're doing and you see things. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, how, how does that, yeah, maybe you can take off on that. How does your ability to partner enable you to use your capacities to really feel what it is, what it is a company is trying to convey? Yeah. Yeah, I think this, without bragging, this is one of my personal skills. Um, you know, it's, it's good to know, and I'll put it, one of my coaches, I take some of the lessons from soccer and apply it to life. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. One of my coaches said a great soccer player isn't somebody who can do all these tricks and score all these goals and that might be involved, but a good soccer player is somebody who knows their strengths and knows their weaknesses and plays with them, right? So you build up your weaknesses and you live in your strengths. One of mine happens to be um, have a high emotional intelligence, I would say, yeah. to, understand, to understand people's needs and understand you know, what they're going through. So having empathy. And I think that 
business is moving a lot in that direction where yeah. it's not just a product you're selling, you're selling a lifestyle. You're not just selling a service, you're selling to the people what you can do for them and partnering with people when you're selling your service. Yeah. And the same thing with me is when we're telling this story visually, we come in and we get to know who you are as the company owner, understand the brand identity, understand the story that you want to communicate with your audience so that they feel connected with you. Sure. The whole point of video marketing is to create an emotional connection. Sure. So. I think you had a, a, there's a beautiful point in there when you said you're emotionally intelligent. I want to tie this in because I know a lot of our listeners, a lot of the people that we work with are actually highly, what I would call sensitive people. They feel right mm -hmm. and for a lot of them that can be viewed or felt as a liability right like i'm just i'm too sensitive I'm, my emotional intelligence is actually in the way of me yeah. showing up and being a successful business person but you've actually turned that superpower into something like that's your secret sauce is that you go in and you feel and you get it and you lean in in a way that's so powerful would you just talk to those people how can you leverage that and convert that from what feels like a weakness or a liability to actually using that in the business world. Yes. Now, this is not to suggest that there aren't going to be times where you're going to have to be the hard business person. However, um, in 2020, it is safe to say that people don't just buy products because they're the cheapest anymore. Sometimes you do. They don't just buy products because, you know, that's the first thing available. A lot of people because of the internet can do research and understand why brands are selling what they do, how they're impacting. And so it comes down to a story. What narrative are you, are you selling? What, and that really has to tie into your personality. So the people that have a conscience, let's say the people that have, emotion or feel passionate about their product or what they're doing, wanting to help people. Those are the people that are the future of business. Yes. Gone are the days of the, if I might say the, the hard ass CEO mm -hmm. that is like yelling down people that that stuff, it doesn't fly anymore. It's a, it's a relic of the past that people see doesn't really work. Right. It's, it comes down to, and I find this in, in all walks of life, the, the carrot or the stick, right? Whether you're selling a, a product, working with people, your company, your internal, um, the internal kind of vibe of what you are presenting to your employees, are you gonna be a carrot or a stick? Now, again, there are gonna be times when you have to lay down the law, when you have to be firm, but as a whole, the people with high emotional intelligence are going to run the future. Hmm. Wow. So that's beautiful. I mean, you know, you, you're, you're preaching art. You're, <laughs> you, you told us that both your parents are missionaries and I just think, man, you know, you're, you're preaching a sermon on the Mount to Justin and I and so many of our people here as well. Um, so a lot of people listening to you think, well, I don't really, I don't really know my personality yet. You know, and they're trying to, you know, when's the right time to jump? How much do you got to have figured out before you can jump into a project like this? Um, always. It's always better to go in with a plan, of course. I'd be lying if I said not. But too many people, they, they hesitate so much that it ne nothing ever happens. Mm. Right? And that's worse to me than not jumping in at all. Yeah. Mm. Um, so I always suggest... Because video can seem very intimidating, there's so many moving parts. It's important to get a, a little grasp on what it is you're doing. Maybe, maybe take some time to understand what your brand identity is. Mm -hmm. Take some time to, we'll, we'll probably get into this a bit later. I think it's important for especially smaller companies to have some idea of what they're comfortable with investing even though they may not know what a video project might cost if you go to the table having a number in your mind you're starting 50 percent further than somebody just you know kind of flopping in the wind but jump in do it video is 
going to be a part of your marketing strategy from now until until business is done. It, it's just the round. If you are planning to be in business, you're going to be doing video. So just get started. It may not be perfect. You may not have everything the way you want, but hesitation is probably worse than, uh, than making those mistakes. All right. Oh, that's beautiful. Man. Yeah. And I, I would think as well that this would be, you know, there's a phrase, Justin, I like, don't figure out, find out, you know, the people are spending all the time figuring out. And it seems like the finding out would be an iterative process with you as well, that actually coming out and telling the story. Can you talk a little bit more about that? Um, <laughs> one of my favorite quotes from one of my favorite business gurus out there. I don't know if maybe people have heard of T. Harv Ecker, but uh, he says, ready, fire, aim, yeah. right? Very simple and it's self-explanatory. So many people wait to aim, 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 and then they miss the opportunity to fire altogether. Yeah. They never shoot. So I, my suggestion is always to ready, fire, aim, get yourself as ready as possible, take the shot. And then once you, once you hit the shot, maybe you hit it the first time. That's fantastic. But once you know what it's like, now you can aim at something more specific. Right. Um, part of the process of dealing with a good video production company is they, they will help you identify those key messages. They will help you identify what you need to be focusing on because good video production companies want to connect your message to your target audience. Mm -hmm. Here's an example. If you're selling luxury products, say a luxury soap, um, but the quality of the video looks really poor. The messaging is talking about something that has nothing to do with a luxury type of brand that you're trying to give a persona to. You will completely miss the mark of how you're talking to your audience. So it's very important. One of the simple exercises that I ask people to do if they haven't really nailed down a brand identity is think about 10 words that describe what you are to people. If, if someone is just walking up to you on the street and you had 10 words to say what your brand company represents, what is it? For black and white media, I'll give you a couple right now. It's stunning visuals, uh, understanding audience, right? We, we have, I've taken the time to understand what it is we're showing our face yeah. uh, or how we want that face to look to our clients. So I think that's important. So what is that? How does a company actually dig into their, like their personality, their identity and start to understand what that is for them? Cause they need it, right? Every business has an identity, whether they know it or not, there's some sort of projection of who they are out there. But I would yes. say most of the companies that, I see around, especially small businesses, it's kind of by default. It's not really intentional about, hey, here's who our person, like here's how I want our personality to show up as in the world. So how do you align those two? Like, here's who I want to be, and here's what's showing up in the world. How do I figure that out and actually have that going out clearly to people? It always starts with leadership. It always starts with the leadership and them identifying what parts of their characteristics come out in the business persona. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you don't want any of your personal attributes to come out. Right. Other times, other times you are your business. So, and this is where business becomes muddled with, um, with personality and understanding who you are. And you know, we had this conversation yesterday, but this is so important to running a business, how your, how your characteristics, your thoughts and your action affect the way your business is able to move forward. I think all of this ties together. And if you don't know, and just going by default, you'll start to trip on things that you'll start to trip on things that if you don't give it thought, can bring your entire business down, but they're your own personality traits. Mm. Nothing to do with the, the product that you're selling. It's 
to do with your own mentality sometimes. So I think it is a wonderful exercise on so many fronts to try and dig deeper in, especially as a leader. If you're the leader of your company leading other people, if you have other employees and, um, and you don't know what that culture is that you're leading your people with, it's very hard to nail that down. And even more so in a video form. Like if you can't identify who you are and your identity, and now you're going to tell the world, here's what I do and here's who I am. I think it's a good exercise to understand that and start with the leadership. I want to follow up, go back. We talked about the iterative process of kind of discovering your message as you're telling your message. But it seems to just knowing, and maybe you could speak to this from your personal journey, that there's a way that, that the business will reflect on you, will show you things about yourself. Yes. You're doing it so that it informs, it'll inform that, right? Again, it's not sitting and figuring yourself out before you get into business. But maybe you can talk a little bit because I know you're, you know, you're very self-reflective and big-hearted and how business has just taught you more about yourself, which you've been able to pop back into your business. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I'll give you a very personal and very deep thing that I'm still working on. I, I have a very creative mind, which, you know, left, left brain. I'm very, I'm all over the place. I, I want to do this and I want to do that grand big ideas, but in business, you need a lot of the right brain as well. You need to be able to focus on singular tasks. You need to be able to finish something that you started. So business has really taught me that, you know, it's one thing to have a great idea. It's another thing to actually execute it. Hmm. Um, and as talented as you might be and as great ideas as you might have, um, the execution of an idea requires patience. It requires tenacity, it requires skill. And not that I never had those things, but I really had to train myself to stay focused, train myself to finish something that I, st that I, uh, that I started. And also, not that I didn't hold integrity as a high value, but even more so now in business, when I say I'm going to do something, I have to deliver on that. I don't want to make excuses. If I say I'm going to show up at 12 o'clock and I show up at 12.10, to me, I've failed and I'm a liar, right? Now, that's, that's an extreme case. But what you say you're going to do, people take your word for it. If, if people can't trust your word, they can't trust your business. So it reveals a lot about your character and shows you things that you have to work on personally because that's something I would like to be remembered for, for my life, not just for my business, that I was a man of integrity, that I said I was gonna do something and I followed through with it. Yeah. Man, that is so beautifully said. And I think that's the focus, especially for me, is even harder when you realize nothing in life, like the day you plant the seed is not the day you eat the fruit. Mm. Right? And so yeah. it's like the work that goes into it and being able to just trust the process that I know what the vision is, I'm doing the right things, I'm putting one foot in front of the other. When you're not necessarily eating the fruit of that right away, for somebody that has a very creative mind, and I can relate to that, that's, that is so tough to really see through the yes. entire process. Um, thanks for sharing that. That, was, that really hit home for me as well. I want to I wanna hear a little bit more because you said that video is a bit of an investment, right? How does somebody actually, like, what are the steps? What do you need to do to actually get the most out of this investment mm -hmm. that you're putting in, right? So that you're actually getting some ROI. You're actually connecting with the right piece. Talk a little bit about some of the pieces of the strategy that go into that. Sure. So first and foremost, what I want to say right off the bat is that people focus so much on the production that they forget the distribution. Mm -hmm. So I've, I've worked with so many clients that they come and they actually take the time to say, here's our budget, 5,000, 10,000, you know, maybe $25,000. I don't know what, what that for different people, different businesses, but there's thinking that's, that's just production, right? 
but there's so much more to that when you're thinking bigger, when you're thinking long term. Mm-hmm. You've got to think about uh, social media advertising. Where is it going? Who is it going to? Are you thinking about you know, how much you're going to have to spend on ads per month to actually get that revenue coming in? Do you have an idea of how much it costs per lead? Now, these things you can discover along the way, but it is important to think about it when you're, when you're first starting with your budget. For example, um, I know one particular company, they have a high ticket service. Their service at a minimum is costing like $5,000 for these clients because it's a long process. It's mm-hmm. whatever. So we discovered that, you know, each lead costs them about $150, like a genuine lead. That's after doing marketing. You know, you have, you make a video, 15,000 people see it. Okay. Maybe four people actually click the lead. And out of those, maybe one person actually follows up, right? That, that ad might cost you uh, $150 to get that one person, but that one person then generates that $5,000 ticket. So we got to think about it logistically in that way. This is why I don't want video to be just the video, right? Here's this magic silver bullet. We've got to frame it in the fact that this video is there to generate leads because at the end of the day, it's a sales tool. It's there to help you sell. Yes, you want it to connect emotionally, but it would be pointless if it's connecting emotionally and not really getting you the result that you're looking for. Right. Well, and, and a lot of businesses that I, that I interact with, they've never actually really thought through their entire sales funnel to yes. begin with. So you're saying like the video really is kind of at the top of the funnel, the big top part of the funnel. Bringing people in. The attention grabber. It's the attention grabber. And this is why it's important to really consider the visuals. And visuals are are still super important because let's say you're selling a great product. Let's say you, you know, have everything, all your ducks in a row. The sales sales funnel is perfectly lined up, but then the visuals are boring and unattractive and don't really connect with people. Then you, then nobody's falling into that funnel in the first place. Right. So yes, we got to think about the whole picture and, um, and you know, we have processes in place. So if I may, we're kind of, you kind of asked me what that process looks like. There are basically five pieces to a video production to consider. Um, we talked about distribution, but you know, after sitting down and with your creative team and figuring out what this could look like, you got to think about pre-production. Okay, pre-production is a cost that you got to think about for video. Production, actually bringing the cameras, the equipment, the lights, all that. What kind of quality are you going for? Post-production in this, I call it the iceberg effect. Because what people see is, what people see visually is the production, where it looks sexy with the lights and the camera and whatnot. But the, the labor, the huge labor intensive stuff, which takes you know, up to a month um, is the post-production, the editing, the graphics, the animation, all that stuff that brings all that magic together. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that's what people are going to see. So the pre, post, and uh, actual production. Those are three parts to think about. Now, if, if you are smart and shopping around for a good video production company, you start with your budget and you shop for value rather than you than shopping for cost. What a lot of people make the mistake of doing is they want the video production company to tell them how much it's going to cost to do this video. So, and then they, they basically let the companies bid and they take the lowest, they take the lowest cost. Right. But, I feel like that's a mistake. After seven years of doing this and writing maybe 20 proposals a week sometimes, Mm. the most value you are going to get is, here's my budget. What can you do for me in that budget? And then you have companies saying, giving you value rather than taking costs. Right. Yes. Wow. 
So when, so a lot of our viewers are probably wondering, yeah, is there a certain place I got to get to before this is a worthwhile investment? So give us a little background on, on just in terms of like different life cycles of the business, what the consideration should be, let's say from startup to mid-range to mature in yeah. determining the applicability of your services. Um, so this is where, this is where video production is unique in that I don't feel that offering flat rates to people is for me, that's a sign of cookie cutter type video production, which never is realistic. Every single company has a different personality different goal. If you think your brand like a person is unique, then the video has to be unique as well which means that a video for a startup company based on their budget, you know, maybe a little bit less in quality, uh, but the message can still be really good. You know, you can focus on the simplicity of things. I don't think there's a, I don't think there's a, a place specifically that when you get here, you start doing video production. I don't think it's like quite like that. I think it's when you are ready to, reach your audience in a more engaging way, in a more interactive way. If you have a clear and concise message that you want to tell in a, in a focused short period of time, you're ready for video, hmm. right? If you don't know, if you're trying to say like 15 things at once, it gets confusing for the viewer. Right. If you don't understand or you can't put a finger quite on what your brand message is, you're not ready for video. I think it's easier to say when you're not ready than when you are. Wow. Man. And so I'm seeing the value big time. And I know we've worked together on some projects and anyway, the ROI, if you want to just look at a business standpoint is it's always been great because you're packaging it in a way that connects with people. I love the strategy that you bring to the table rather than just here's a video. Good luck. That's been yeah. super helpful for me. So I see the value in producing beautiful visuals and all that part. Now, how do you supplement that, right? You have your iPhone and I know that I'm seeing some of these moves right now towards um, document over, you know, just creating, you know, high production value all the time, but people want to see behind the scenes. They want to see yeah. the process. They yeah. want to see you when you don't have it all figured out and you on camera saying, Hey, I don't have this all figured out. How do you then balance that in a strategy with some of these stunning visuals and very mm -hmm. pointed messages with more of kind of the raw behind the scenes footage, how would you advise, especially now where people want to connect more with the people behind the brand? Absolutely. So as a video production company, it almost is not self-serving to say, Oh, you don't need me for this particular thing. But I think it's important think to know. Different. Yeah. I, but it is a puzzle. Yeah. It's very important to know when, when is the time to be authentic? Let's just shoot this with an iPhone. And when is there a need to have more of a brand message that looks a bit more professional? Mm -hmm. Now, because social media moves so quickly, all right, I feel that that authenticity is for the moment now. For example, um, you just quickly get a product that you're really excited about and you just want to show people on your Instagram feed or a Facebook story or something like that. Absolutely share, share with video. And as technology grows, there are going to be more ways to do like a on demand on the spot type of sharing. However, that's going to fade very quickly. That's yeah. like, it's, it's here for a moment and then it's gone. The purpose behind a decent quality video production is that you want shelf life. Mm -hmm. So a really good video should be able to last you for years. That same message, that same. And when I shoot again, not to brag about myself, but you're looking for a proper video production company that can do something called future proofing. Future proofing is so that the isn't just made for six months and then oh it becomes obsolete yeah the next month 
you want shelf life out of that, which means you want to shoot a little bit higher quality than you actually need mm -hmm. so that, you know, you know, 4k is the buzzword right now, right? Right. Everyone has to shoot things in, in 4k, but it actually is helpful because as more people's internet connections become uh, capable of handling 4k video, you're now reaching more people in a really high quality way. So we shoot things for future proofing, but, um, what you're looking for, and again, to summarize the difference between doing a quick, authentic iPhone video is for something here in the now, mm -hmm. which is still super important, but the quality you're going after is for longevity and shelf life. Yeah. That's something that can go on your website. It can be your hero video. You can share it over and over again. Those things I'll never, I still, I made a commercial for uh, tourism for my town, Oakville, which you remember mm -hmm. that that was three years ago that we're still cutting in different ways. And they're using as social media content wow. to this day. Right? So when you shoot things with quality in mind, same thing, if you buy a pair of shoes that has quality, it's going to last longer. Sure. Whereas you buy a pair of shoes for the moment, you know, holes come in it, it busts up. You know, it doesn't last as long. So, sure. well, and the most effective, I love how you said that. I, what I'm seeing, the most effective strategies that are really reaching the people are a really good combination of mm -hmm. both, where you have these beautiful, um, I like how you said these long shelf life type of videos that live in these places where people see them often. And then your daily content is actually driving more people to go and see the long shelf Correct. life video too. So, um, right. Yeah, really a model that combines both. Well said, well said. So if I may say quickly, part of, part of the reason I got into this too is that I saw this, you know, sort of divide between, you know, the way people did their social media yeah. and the way that they had their brand online. But I think that strategy has to come together like a Venn diagram. They, yeah. There is going to be overlap. And so while we can help and consult and figure out a plan for how you know how you want to post things in a certain timing because social media is all about consistency it's all about consistently putting out things so we've helped people say when's monday wednesday friday you're going to do a quick post in this platform and that's going to be an ongoing thing to drive your uh, social media marketing up However, on Thursdays, on the third week of this month, we're going to do a production, an actual production, where you can post it on social media, but it's going to live on your website. It's going to be part of this series that you're putting out. Um, and so it's drive, driving people there. And so there's a lot of overlap in figuring out that strategy. So I, I want to take a little different because we're starting to put together like this, the magic formula, you know, the secret of the with the algorithm for this, yes. let's throw in the algorithm of authenticity here, okay? Because this is really what vague. That, that's what's selling, right? Yes. And, and how would you, what tips would, could you give for business people, entrepreneurs, entrepreneurs, in terms of how they can connect with that kind of authentic message? What, 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 are the, what, do, what do you see? How do you, you know, like, how do you see it? When you see it, you go, yeah, that's it. What, what is it you're seeing? Yeah. So I want to start with this example. Uh, you guys have been to network marketing events, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> Painfully, but not recently, thank God. <laughs> you know the one guy in the room everybody's trying to avoid because you can smell the sales coming off of him from like, uh -huh. the other corner of the room? He's, he's not there to get to know people or connect. He's literally there to sell you a product and that's he's meeting his quota and he's done okay right. that's what i find a lot of people are trying to do with their content just bash you with buy this buy this buy this and you are missing the opp opportunity of a, a long relationship customers who trust your brand will be customers for a long time if you're not trying to bash them hmm. but if you connect with them uh, maybe on something very specific. So it's also about, we talked about getting to know yourself as a brand. 
The other step is to getting to know your demographic as your customers. Right. What, who are they? What type of people are interested in buying your products or services? Knowing who they are, you can speak to them directly in their language. You know, if you have a brand that sells, um, you know, t-shirts, but your, your brand identity is about freedom and lifestyle and travel. Okay. You got to know who that audience is, that demographic to authentically speak to them. Right. If that demographic is, you know, twenties to thirties who love to travel, who love adventure. Okay. You're not going to sit there and do like a, talking head financial type video, just, it won't work. Right. No matter how I authentic it is, there are moments for it, but if you are trying to reach that demographic, figure out what is connecting with them and then use that language to talk to them. Now it's, it's not as though, you know, people find that I think sometimes marketing is like you're tricking people into buying something from you. I don't, see, I don't see it as that. I think if you truly believe you have something that the world can benefit from, you're simply trying to connect the dots. Yes. I have something that you can use. Here's, here's my, what we do. And people will naturally say, oh, that's me. They put themselves in the place of the characters that they're seeing on the screen. Yeah. I can see myself traveling there. I can see myself wearing that shirt. So that's what for me marketing is. It's not quite as sinister as tricking people into buying your products, I think. Oh. Well, and I like I like what you were saying, just even on the content front about bashing people over the head with like buy this, buy that. Like just nobody likes that guy or girl in the room at all mm -hmm. uh, when you're mm -hmm. at a networking thing or whatever. Um, but on social media, that's actually for most businesses, I see way too much of that every and this is just really practical, super granular. Yes. Like every post has a buy action in. So like, hey, here's a picture of me and my baby. Call me for roofing tips. Or like <laughs> and every, every single thing yes. is yes. Um, And I like what you said. To me, marketing equals connection. Like yes. that actual, like all, if all you're doing is connecting with people, that is effective marketing and the rest of the buying and the whatever i think is really powerful but if you focus i'm just making some good notes here man like if you're really focused on genuinely being yourself and connecting to the person yes. who needs what you have yes right the rest of it the rest of that funnel you obviously have to have built but man yes. you like you've connected it's a relationship now here's so, a very quick important sorry dave real quick it's about adding value to that person's life yes and sometimes it's in the form of them purchasing something from you, but it's a two way street. If you can give them an, a tip or an idea of something without going after a sale, that person is, you're building trust with that person. Mm -hmm. So I think some, some content that you are in your strategy building needs to be just simply, I'm giving you some of my knowledge, some of my information. Okay. And that's it. No sales, no nothing. Here's why I'm trustworthy because I'm giving you something. Uh, that's very important. Sorry, Dave, go ahead. No, no, I was actually, I was going off script here. I don't, not that we have a script, but if we had one, I'd be going off it. Because what you talk about, I was going, what was it like when you two guys met? Yeah, I bet you didn't tell us. I'm, really, I want to know, tell, tell, us the, tell us the first date story. What was that like and what did you see each other? And how does it relate to what we're talking about here? I heard... Um, the Lion King song playing as soon as we met, it was like, ah, Virginia. it was like <laughs> magic happening. These two African brothers, this right. special thing. That was good, man. <laughs> oh my gosh. So I'm trying to think what was, I just remember, um, it's, it's like people, you don't remember what they say, you remember how they made you feel. I remember feeling um, like I found a long lost brother that I was safe and I could be myself, which is huge. Um, and that I was around someone. It's, it's kind of like you meet someone from your tribe and you're like, Oh, okay. Which is very rare for me. Um, people that I feel like I really connect with at a, you are my people. Like I would put you in my close circle 
and you can live at my house, which actually we did live at your house for a minute. <laughs> uh, yeah. So yeah, that's the, that is my memory. What's your memory of that? I will ne I, again, I can't remember exactly what you said, but, uh, but it was shocking because I wasn't expecting it from you. So I saw the tall bearded man and you said something so funny. And I was just like, that's my bro. <laughs> that's right and it's it's almost like um i <laughs> i wanted to be friends with you like immediately you know yes some people you're like okay i gotta get to know this person like you have this kind of barrier of trust even matthew knows this oh yeah because because matthew is a pastor like i do i had to like come in with some skepticism first sure because anyone with the label pastor, you gotta you gotta earn the trust. Right. But, uh, but with you, it's like all barriers down immediately. Well, we were uh, immediately having slumber parties watching Interstellar together. <laughs> like this, is, it, so it went deep pretty quick. Yes. So here's yeah. what I, I want to. I mean, it's beautiful. And you know, we're all relationship people. And but what does this tell you about the future? You know, comp compare and contrast that with that guy or woman in the networking event who's oh, trying yeah. to get your credit, slip your credit card out of your wallet. I mean, I'll ask both of <laughs> you, what, is that, what does this tell you about the future of business? Man. The uh, future of business is personal. Earlier uh, about the high emotional intelligence, people with high, high emotional intelligence will run the future. I wrote that down. I think mm -hmm. that's absolutely right. And I don't, and not just emotionally intelligent as in you know what to do, and you can manipulate people. I mean like highly em emotionally connected and mm -hmm. empathetic in a way that you can actually relate and connect mm -hmm. with humans. That is the future. People are sniffing out BS from a mile away. Uh, mm -hmm. More and more and more uh, as the years go on, there's more content available, more access available. It's like get, get real or get left. Like that's just, that's how I'm seeing. What are you seeing? Yes. No, I am seeing more and more in business that, um, well, the internet, you don't, it's not enough just to, you know, have your product being good, explaining what it is. People want to know why you do what you do now. Mm -hmm. You know, we have the ability to, to actually dig deep into companies and brands. Now, without getting too political, I do want to say that even if you disagree with some like politically and things like that, um, you know, I think it's important to deal with people as, as humans. That being said, you can align yourself with things you believe in more so than not. Mm -hmm. Right. If, if some, if you have, if you have a heart for the environment, you know, doesn't make sense to go out and buy a Hummer, right? You can, you can, you can vote with your money. Mm -hmm. So uh, aligning with people who are doing what you believe in is, is quite important. I, and I want to use this opportunity to, to pitch the Commonwealth group because Jude is one of our founding members there. And I think the fact, and you, you know, correct me if I'm wrong or add to if I'm right, is that we're creating this culture, What we're talking about here, we're creating an entirely different culture of what it means to do business in relationship to be yeah. smart, bottom line, savvy business people. At the same time, what does it mean to have that skill and to create the kind of culture that, you know, that's so, so palpable with you guys? Mm -hmm. Yes, oh, it's, it's huge. And that's, that's what it's about. And that's the gap that I think Dave and I, when we started on this journey, that's the gap that really shook us is there was nowhere that we knew of where we could connect with our tribe. These highly emotionally intelligent, intuitive, big hearted business people who still wanted to bring it into the world through sustainable value. Um, we just didn't find a home for those people. So we just had to make it. And that's been the Commonwealth group. And it's been really fun to have you Judah in there just adding so much value and to see that thing growing like crazy right now is, um, and I would add, so we'll, Judy, you'll be there tomorrow. So we're going to go deeper into a lot of these as well in a more personal way with our businesses. So, no, if you're interested, there'll be a posting. The other thing I want to mention is Justin and I, we met. I mean, it wasn't, we didn't, I didn't get the Lion King, you know, going to my 
But I mean, the fact that you can't find two guys who are more tribally distinct genetically, <laughs> right? At, at a yeah. human level, sure. Yeah. I mean, but the same, the same way, you can just have this instant connection with someone. And it's just such a beautiful way to live because it just crosses. It's just this authenticity to authenticity and love to love. And yes. then, you know, color, all that color, all that stuff. It just comes in there. So anyway, I just, I'm moved by it. I'm just moved by love. And I, I love to see how it manifests in all the different ways. And I'm, I'm so glad I went off script because I just wanted to watch you guys kind of bask in each other's friendship <laughs> appreciation as well. Oh, man. Can I just tell you man, so something much. that I love about Justin? Like, it, <laughs> yes. I, I can talk. <laughs> Absolutely. Stop I can talk about. I can talk about, you know, he has a great character and he's bubbly. And literally when he walks into a room, the room is different. Okay. But that's all known for me. Something that's a little less known as a friend. I, I don't consider people friends unless they can tell me my business. Like, and let me explain what I mean by that. There's something in the Bible that I find hold very dear that iron sharpens iron, right? If you have someone that you would consider a friend that isn't willing to tell you the truth, even if it hurts, isn't willing to challenge you and tell you you're doing this wrong, I don't know if I, me personally, would consider that a friend. I would call that a yes man um, because they're just literally an echo chamber. I want friends around me that if I'm doing something something stupid or wrong, we'll say, hey, you know, let's let's clean that up a little bit or let's let's fix that up. And Justin is that he he will tell you the truth. And that to me is more a, more valuable than somebody just agreeing, yeah, this is great. This is everything. Right. Justin, I'm so yeah. blessed to have you in my life, man. You make me cry over here. That means so much. And I and I, I want to go into that, just how that how that shows up for me and my in myself and why that's so important to me is it's not even just that I care about you enough to tell you the truth. It's that I see you. Mm -hmm. I see who you can be. I see who you're destined to be, or at least glimpses. And so when I see a king who's like, oh, you're not moving like a king right now. Mm -hmm. I need to call that out because I'm I want to call people up to their potential or to what they actually are on this planet to be rather than letting them. So I care about people too much to have them moving around like this when they're supposed to be a, a king. And that's, and so I just see, wanted to just encourage you, man. I just see such destiny on your life. I see a king. I see somebody who's meant to do big things. Um, so I have to, it's my duty. Um, I want to, I want to see you as you. So, um, so man, let me yeah. see. Here we go. I'm, I'm going to put the ribbon on it. Then you yeah. Land the, I'll put the ribbon. Land the plane. So first of all, these are some remarkable people to work with, and 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 so uh, first of all, Judo, we want to find you. They want to work with you. What do they do? Where do they find you? How do we start? Sure. So easiest way, BlackWhiteMedia.ca. We are based, of course, in Toronto, but you know a lot of the services that we offer are not geographically limited. Mm -hmm. Um, with, well, with and we try to get your butt down to the triangle region here in Durham um, specifically at least once a year. So um, if you are interested, reach out to me too, and I'll let you know when he's coming down to shoot a bunch of stuff for me. And I want to say also, so Justin, if people want to work with you and, and us too, but I want to blow my own horn here. I'll blow yours. Oh, man. I just they, they want to get some iron sharp and not because, you know, me and Justin, we, we, have, we our iron, our sparks, man, we, we can't be on anything combustible. <laughs> we're iron on iron maybe we're, we're giving us some heat and some sparks yeah so they want to work more with you or with us what do they do oh man reach out social media is easiest for me um reach out to me on instagram at justin minot uh, m-i-n-o-t-t and like judo was saying i just i try to put out as much helpful content as i can so um just hop on there and let me know what you're doing i exist i'm on the planet to help people unleash their potential that's why i'm here that's why i know i'm here and so if you have something that you're dreaming about and you want to take it to the next level, um, I'm the guy. So that's, uh, that's it. That's All fun. right, that's it. Love I'm going to guys. just um, I think I'll leave tomorrow. I, 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 and actually, hang on a minute. We'll, uh, we'll wrap this up on our end. Love to Facebook world. And thanks for making time today.